Uh, and <laughs> I just noticed there's a, um, a turtle inflatable down in front of Mission Control in celebration oh. of our new <laughs> landing location uh, at uh, Dry Tortugas. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Uh, celebrating our new splashdown yeah. zone, welcoming the Polaris Dawn crew home. <laughs> um, and we are a little over halfway through that blackout period. We are expecting to hopefully gain comms back uh, in about a couple minutes minutes from now again. Uh, and this, you can see on your screen, is the first ground view of the Dragon capsule making its way back entering the Earth's atmosphere. I love this view. Uh, <laughs> it's a it's it's so fun to watch this. I can only imagine what it would be like to watch it with our own eyes. Um, this thermal view uh, in particular is really cool because you can you can see the trail behind it. Oh, no. that is so awesome. There's four humans inside of that capsule yeah. right now. <laughs> so once again, we are in the anticipated communications blackout period. Um, basically, there is an envelope of ionized air around the spacecraft, and it blocks radio signals from reaching Dragon. So this basically plasma field around it prohibits us from commanding the vehicle or from communicating with the crew. Uh, so this anticipated blackout period lasts about seven minutes so uh, we should be coming out of it here in about the next minute or so we will probably start to hear uh, the spacex core begin to reach out to the dragon capsule uh, just trying to hail them or we might even hear from uh, the polariston crew first oh that's an incredible view wow. from the recovery <laughs> ship uh, stationed <laughs> out in the water. That is a sight to see for the people that are watching this live. Uh, yeah. It's not a comet. It is just the Polaris Dawn crew coming back to Earth. Wow, that is an amazing view. <laughs> Once again, we expect this uh, blackout period to end in about a minute. Another view of the... Dragon SpaceX, com check. I can have you loud and clear. Help me, SpaceX. Loud and clear, Jared. Expect automated shoot deployment. Incredible views, incredible comms. We have <laughs> regained communications <laughs> with the Polaris Dawn crew. This is a drone circling the recovery vessel. And that little white dot, I should start, the big white dot on the right, obviously the moon, the little white dot there in the center of your screen is the Dragon Resilience Vehicle making its way, its final few kilometers back down to planet Earth after spending five days in orbit. Wow, just some epic views tonight. <laughs> you can hear the crowd here in Hawthorne getting excited. We've confirmed that we have comms with the crew. Dragon SpaceX, GPS converged. Expect nominal altitude for drogue chute deploy. Copy that, SpaceX. We show the same in tracking. And the crew is still traveling very quickly right now as they're coming back through the Earth's atmosphere. But as you heard, the drogue chutes should be deploying here shortly, and that's going to slow them down significantly. Yeah, we, uh, we expect those to deploy in about 90 seconds. And as we heard in those comms, it's triggered by GPS. So the Dragon capsule using that, um, that, that GPS will automatically know exactly when to deploy it. And that happens around 40 kilometers. Once the drogue parachutes deploy, about a minute after that, we'll see the main parachutes. And it's pretty incredible that we only, uh... we can see seat rotation now underway. This helps put the crew in a uh, more ergonomic position in anticipation of Brace splashdown. Brace for drogue window. Copy, we're bracing. Should see those chutes deploy here shortly. And you can see the crew bracing <laughs> as instructed <laughs> for the change in velocity. It's 
standing by for deployment of the drogue parachutes. These will help bring the vehicle down from about 350 miles per hour when they deploy down to about 119 miles per hour when the main parachutes deploy. There we can see that the <laughs> drogue chutes have successfully deployed. <laughs> it's a great thermal image. Aww. And that view is from the actual basin where those drogue parachutes are located. Dragon SpaceX visual on two healthy drogues. Copy that SpaceX, we show the same. <laughs> These drogue parachutes help to stabilize the Dragon capsule and get it into the right orientation before those main parachutes uh, pop out, as well as providing that initial deceleration. This is such a great thermal shot of the, the Dragon capsule. You can see it turning a little bit with the drug parachutes. And there are the four main chutes now deployed. They'll slowly open up to their full uh, deployment here in just a few seconds. Incredible views of the Polaris Dawn crew returning to Earth after five days <laughs> in Earth's orbit. The crowd here at Mission Control in Hawthorne cheering. <laughs> it's a beautiful sight to see. Copy that SpaceX, can show the same? 1,000. Copy 1,000. Beautiful sight to see those four healthy main parachutes. So great. Now yeah. in about two minutes, we expect our splashdown to occur. And you may hear the crew in the core talking. They're uh, communicating about their altitude as they make their way back down to Earth. We should start. 800. Yeah, there it is. So we should start to hear and our, our hearing uh, our commander, Jared Isaacman, call out the altitude as they descend to the ocean's surface. We can see the Polaris Dawn crew nestled in their seats there on the left-hand side of your screen as they anticipate their splashdown. Copy, six. And you can see the difference in velocity. This is a lot gentler than just a few minutes ago. The Dragon is coming back down to Earth. Absolutely. <laughs> These main parachutes deploy at about 119 miles per hour and help slow the Dragon capsule down to about 15 miles per hour when it makes contact with the ocean. You can also see that the capsule is down. Yeah. The capsule is now stabilized. It's no longer spinning like we saw it with the drug parachutes. Two hundred, we're bracing. Copy two hundred and brace. Bracing for splashdown. That will be the final call we hear from Jared until contact with the ocean surface. Standing by for a splashdown of the Polaris Dawn crew. And there you can see. As you can see on your screen, and by the cheers behind us, the Polaris Dawn crew has successfully splashed down. Welcome back to planet Earth, Polaris Dawn. SpaceX recovery team now moving into place to begin the process of strapping the Dragon capsule up with the necessary uh, rigging in order to lift it onto the recovery vessel.
Dragon Capsule appears to be in a pretty stable uh, position. After SpaceX Dragon, vehicle code one, cruise code one. SpaceX copies code one. Now the recovery teams have been ready and waiting about three nautical miles away. So it's going to take them just about 30 minutes to make their way to Jared, Kid, Sarah, and Anna, who are currently inside of the Dragon capsule that you see there on your screen, back here, home on Earth. That call out that we heard earlier, uh, confirmation of what uh, I had said a little bit prior to in terms of that stable configuration, that code one call out um, is the reflection of the crew's reporting of that, of that landing position. We can see the Dragon capsule bobbing in the distance. Like Jesse said, the recovery team is a little ways away from the splashdown location, uh, obviously to ensure their safety, um, as well as the safety of the Polaris Dawn crew. So it takes a little while for the large recovery vessel to make its way over to the Dragon capsule, but there are a couple of fast boats that we will likely see come into screen um, sooner than later. And those fast boats carry- Space tank Dragon, we're stable one. Those fast boats carry. Copy, stable one. Those fast boats carry the recovery team members that will scoop up the parachutes from the water, <coughs> excuse me, as well as perform the initial safety checks to make sure that there are no hypergolic fuel vapors or um, uh, any any basically potentially harmful vapors remaining around the Dragon capsule following the deorbit sequence. So we'll see a crew with some personal protective equipment uh, on around the, uh, wearing that personal protective equipment around the capsule, performing those safety checks before allowing anyone to get uh, too close to the capsule. And I love that we have those fast boats, you know, instead of waiting for the recovery vessel to make it uh, with crew members on board there, we have the fast boats to get there while the recovery vessel is making its way towards the capsule. And we can do all that work in advance. And they are very fast, as you can Dragon see. SpaceX, on behalf of the entire team of SpaceX, welcome home. We have pulled go for recovery personnel to approach. Except, expect personnel alongside in approximately one minute. Copy that, SpaceX and uh, Polaris Dawn. We are mission complete. Thanks for all the big help pulling this mission together. Now we did see a jet ski pass by. That jet ski has a couple uh, recovery folks on board. They've got the go to do those uh, you know, gas and hazardous checks to make sure that Dragon uh, is safe for the recovery vessel to approach. Yeah, and this view here is actually from a drone hovering near the Dragon capsule. So it gives you a little bit better perspective of how close the fast boats are. Like I mentioned before, some of them are uh, scouring the water looking for the parachutes that were released after Dragon splashed down. We'll try to retrieve those. Uh, and the, another fast boat will approach and begin those safety checks for any hypergolic vapors. Uh, and yeah, we can see them getting, oh, actually you can kind of see one of those parachutes there floating in the water to the right hand side. And then the moon in the distance. <laughs> what a great view. Some great lighting from the moon at this yeah. light, this uh, night. Uh, splash down tonight. Now, I'm pretty sure this is uh, the first time we've had these views on our recovery webcasts. <laughs> so it's pretty cool to see. I love, <laughs> I love that we get this this view right here <laughs> where we can see the the lights on inside Dragon Capsule <laughs> through the windows. Almost looks uh, like the eyes of Dragon. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. So 
So the fast boat that is closest to the Dragon capsule, uh, that is the crew that will begin. Yeah, you can see with the stick there, that is basically a hypergolic um, uh, detection device. Uh, and yeah, they will attach to the Dragon capsule to get a little closer. Uh, and we can see that they have respirators on. This helps ensure that if there are any lingering vapors that uh, they will not be exposed to those. Now the recovery team, just like the Polaris Dawn crew, uh, they perform quite a bit of training in order to be able to perform these activities safely. In fact, at, if, for those of you that have never watched our recovery um, shows before, but there will actually be someone that jumps into the water and begins climbing on Dragon Capsule in order to secure the straps that are necessary to lift the, the Dragon Capsule out of the water. Oh, well, there's a cool shot there because you can actually see the basin where the main parachutes were located. That's where uh, the, the, oh, here's a thermal view now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that lower, larger basin is where the main parachutes were located. A dragon capsule definitely looks toasty having <laughs> come back through the Earth's atmosphere. A little bit toasty there. It was a little hot coming back. Yeah. <laughs> and again, right now the recovery team is ensuring the safety of the crew, uh, making sure there's no hazardous gases around the vehicle. They're pulling the chutes out of the water which is what that thing is below <laughs> the Dragon Capsule there on the bottom right hand side of your screen. It is not a giant squid. <laughs> I love how there are lights on these boats. Uh, maybe not there, actually I take that back. I don't think it's lights on the boats. I think it's lights with some of... Um, Dragon SpaceX, Hypergol sweeps and unfired ordnance checks. Nominal rigging in progress, approximately two, five minutes until capsule lift. Stand by for PMC. Copy that, two, five minutes for capsule lift, and glad all the checkouts are good. All right, great news there, um, letting us know, and we can see that the crew members have uh, basically taken off their respirators, allows them to work a little bit more efficiently. Uh, also heard that the crew will have their- Dragon SpaceX for PMC. PMC standing for private medical conference, so this is an opportunity to check in Go with- SpaceX. I would like to try and do the PMC in 10 minutes, one zero minutes, looking for crew to be okay with that weight. Crew's good, we'll call you if we need to pull it in, but right now one zero minutes seems good. Copy. All right, so that PMC private medical conference, that's just an opportunity for the crew to chat with the flight surgeon check in, make sure everybody's feeling good. So it sounds like the crew is on board to have that occur in 10 minutes. Meanwhile, the recovery teams here on your screen scurrying. Oh, there, we, our first view of the individual <laughs> on top of the capsule. <laughs> uh, yeah, we. <laughs> I have said this in many Splashdown webcasts before. Not enough money in the world to convince me to do that <laughs> job. I have so much admiration and respect for the people that can. Uh, just doing that in dark water <laughs> would be terrifying to me. And I love how efficient and well-trained all of these individuals are. They, you, I, we can see it at, in action here. They, they function as a, a really strong unit altogether. Um, even in, I mean, these waters are pretty calm, but you can see the capsule and the boats kind of moving around. Um, and it's, it's not like they're on land. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, Kate, I mean, at least they are in uh, near the Florida Keys. Uh, they probably got some pretty clear water, even though it is nighttime. Uh, I wouldn't mind, you know, jumping on top of the capsule, and <laughs> <laughs> trying to, to rig up the dragon capsule there. It looks like a pretty fun job, actually. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I, nighttime would be a hard no. <laughs> Daytime, maybe. Dragon SpaceX for PMC. 
Go SpaceX. All right, we're actually ready to do a PMC now, so I'm going to be privatizing Dragon to Ground. You'll next hear from the ship surgeon. Captain of SpaceX. So cool to see this happening live with the various recovery team members working to install the straps and the rigging that is necessary in order to uh, in order to safely lift the Dragon capsule out of the water. Um, I want to give a special shout out to the SpaceX weather team and the recovery <laughs> team for unlocking this location and adding it to uh, our, our sites of availability for Dragon recovery opportunities and, and options because um, as we saw trying to launch this mission um, when we originally when we were Oh, just kidding. Fake Quindar. <laughs> uh, when we were trying to launch this, weather was really problematic. And it wasn't just the weather at the launch site, which is what most Dragon people SpaceX, think of. Dragon Ground is no longer privatized. Yeah, the, the weather at the launch site is what most people think of. Um, but when we have a shorter duration, uh, basically free flyer type mission like this, where the Dragon capsule is only in orbit for a few days, not only do we have to look at the immediate weather around the launch site and the weather during the ascent abort uh, phases like we always do, but at the time of launch, we also have to be really confident that there will be good weather in the at least a, hand, a couple of landing locations um, available to us at the time of launch. And there, that wasn't an option for any of our existing sites. And the recovery team and the weather team worked really hard to identify this new location and just look how calm the waters are. Wow. It was perfect for this splashdown today. And yeah, Kate, like for the last few weeks, um, weather, you know, in Florida is, you know, that time it's, of year. <laughs> it's the hurricane season. So it's a little bit tough. Um, and like you said, you know, five days trying to make sure that weather is good from start to finish is really, really difficult with that type of weather there in Florida, where typically, you know, other missions, we've gone, gone to the International Space Station where we can kind of wait out weather if we need to. Um, for a mission like the Free Flyer, like you said, uh, that's a little bit harder. Yeah. We don't have as much cargo space to uh, keep you know, food and supplies um, much longer than the planned duration of the mission. Obviously, there's some um, extra in there in case they did need to stay out in space, but we got some some excellent weather for this. And a big shout out to Starlink. We've got this view here brought to you by Starlink, and we're now seeing the recovery vessel getting closer and closer to the Dragon capsule uh, this is where the Dragon capsule is going to be lifted out of the water onto this recovery vessel. A great shot of the helicopter yeah. pad there on top. That's pretty cool. <laughs> so a helicopter is going to come once the crew is on board, once the capsule is on board, the crew's on board um, and has exited the Dragon capsule. A helicopter is going to come land on the recovery vessel and actually fly the crew back to land. That's a lot faster path than waiting on the recovery vessel to get back to land. Um, and that's important to make sure that the crew is safe, healthy, and they can get into, um, hopefully get, get some sleep maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I did make a note that the crew, um, you know, while they are on orbit, everything is scheduled, including their sleep periods. Uh, and they actually had their wake up call at 6.25 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, or 9.25 p.m. Eastern time. So it's right now almost 1 a.m. Pacific time. So yeah, they've been awake for a while and they had quite 
quite quite a day, uh, <laughs> honestly. And I'm sure that they are most excited to see their families again and also probably pretty excited to get a good night's sleep. <laughs> In a bed. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of floating around. Yeah. Now, if you've recently joined us, uh, unfortunately, you missed um, quite a bit of action already, but we still have a bit to go. Uh, so far, we, as you can see, have had a successful splashdown of the Dragon Capsule carrying the Polaris Dawn crew. They splashed down about 12.36 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, unfortunately, I, I uh, was too excited and I didn't catch the exact splashdown time, but I think it was right around then. Um, and that is now uh, the recovery of the cup of the capsule is now underway. This view is um, of the recovery team in one of those fast boats. We can see some of the recovery crew members working to uh, place the straps and the rigging around the capsule that that will be used, <coughs> excuse me, to lift the Dragon capsule out of the water and onto the recovery vessel. And uh, from there, the crew members will, will uh, excuse me, the recovery team members will open up the side hatch. And uh, that will be the first breath of fresh air that this crew has had since they lifted off. Uh, let's see, five days ago, oh, man, this week has been such a blur. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that was Monday night, I, I think. A Monday night for us, yes. Yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's been, it's been quite a few days. And once that hatch is open, we will then bring each crew member out one at a time. Uh, they will then head up to the medical deck and have uh, an in-person checkout with the flight surgeon, uh, or excuse me, the, the flight surgeon that is on the ship, so the ship surgeon. And yeah, from there, they'll get to get on the helicopter that you mentioned. Yeah, and the uh, flight surgeon will be the first to greet the crew once that hatch is open. Um, and they'll help the, the recovery team um, and crew will help them exit the Dragon capsule if they need to. Um, and we actually, you know, again, three years ago today, the Inspiration4 crew lifted off and did their three-day mission in space. So we'll get to hear some of their thoughts on what that was like exiting the capsule for the first time coming back down to Earth. It was a really kind of a bittersweet time. Like we knew we had just completed all these different milestones. We had done all that research. Um, and I know Polaris Don, they have so much more research they're going to get through. But we had just gotten down into the water and now we're just sitting there waiting and waiting um, to come out and then go on to the next thing, right? And how do we take this story? How do we take this experience and share it with everybody yeah. that's been experiencing it with us, which they were, they were, they were watching us the entire time, which I think was amazing. We, we had so many people donate to St. Jude uh, during our flight. Uh, that was one of the most incredible things to learn about. Yeah, later that night after Splashdown, right. when we found out we surpassed our $200 million fundraising goal, I, I remember I just couldn't stop crying. I was just so happy. And I love the fact that, you know, our families heard the sonic boom of us coming home. It's like we announced, here we come. I'm glad they knew that was a good thing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's true. Um, but that's my, true. my brother, you know, Hayden is an aerospace engineer. He was like, yeah. He was so excited to hear that. He knew exactly what it was. And we were the first uh, SpaceX crew to splash down in the Atlantic. So we were yeah, the true. first crew to cause uh, a sonic boom back over Florida since the, the shuttle shuttles. stopped flying. Yeah, yeah. I know. Such a special moment, you know? Right. And I just remember getting back onto the boat and you know, the, and then working on opening up the side hatch for the first time. And Anil being there to welcome us. Welcome and I just- home, Earthling. I know, yeah. I'll never forget that. <laughs> and I just, I think about the fact that, you know, Anil is, got to greet us and now he's a NASA astronaut and the fact that Anna gets to go and yes. have that experience. And during all of this, she was with our families. Yes. She was supporting them mm -hmm. and um, all of them were supporting our mission. So Sarah was in mission control. Mm -hmm. She was chatting with us for launch and in yeah. space and you know, she had trained us to that point. And then Kid was one of the first faces that we saw back on Earth. He had been there every step of the way. Yeah. 
And, um, with fried chicken. <laughs> with fried chicken. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was ready for some earth food when I got back. I thought that was funny because you were like, fried chicken. I just remember you. And you kind of like. Hanging out of our mouths as we were oh, dying. Yeah. The I have, oh, there's this good. photo, and, um, you know, I'm still like getting used to gravity again, which we had been there three days. I didn't think it'd be such a readjustment. But I'm laying on the stretcher. I've been eating fried chicken, and it's all oh, over me. <laughs> and I didn't even sit up. I was like, I don't care. I'm so happy. <laughs> I remember Anil coming in and being like, you know, to get help us get out of our, our suit, and, well, out of our seats, and thinking, I've got this. I've got to be like, mm. you know, this is going to be my, my Phoenix rising moment coming off of the spacecraft. What were you thinking when you first got up on the land and, well, it was onto the boat, and the camera's there, and you're standing? I, I know. I felt like I wanted to have a good show as well, and but the problem I had was that the boat started rocking. Yeah. And now all of a sudden I'm unsteady, and so I look like this, you know, this kind of elephant who's learning how to walk for the first time. <laughs> uh, but it, yeah, I was really really excited to, to be back and to go see everyone and, and share the story. And I felt great. I felt awesome. And I looked at you guys coming out too, and you were just strutting your way on to the, the next section. And, and then Jared, of course, followed behind me. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Jared was last out. He, Jared always let us go first. Yep. Ladies first. Yep. yep. Love hearing the inspiration <laughs> for uh, memories, really, of their own spaceflight mission. Uh, I, I'm sure that the second time around for Jared will feel a little bit different. He, um, you know, had flown on the Inspiration4 mission, as they were mentioning. And, oh, he, this is uh, uh, a cool view because we, we, can, we can start to see how close the recovery vessel is to the Dragon capsule. We still have the fast boat there working to install the uh, straps that are required to lift the vehicle into that nest that you see there on your screen. So that arm will actually extend out over the water and that will, is what will lift the dragon capsule up and into that nest there at the end. That nest will then translate to the forward end of the boat, or excuse me, the recovery vessel, and that's where we'll let them hang out while we open up the side hatch. Oh, wow. That is just an incredible view. Some great lights, some clear water. Clear skies, we got the moon. Yeah, the moon in the background, and all brought to you by Starlink. <laughs> I loved hearing that uh, Haley's first thing coming out of the capsule was eating fried Dragon chicken. SpaceX, <laughs> be advised, transitioning forward link, comm will be unavailable for a little less than five minutes. Copy that, SpaceX. <laughs> Yeah, getting some fried chicken fresh off the Dragon capsule. Um, and also another cool full circle moment with Anil, that is Anna Menon's husband, yeah. uh, was the flight surgeon that greeted the Inspiration4 crew, which is really cool. Um, and now Anna has completed her mission in space. Um, just so cool to to see that full circle moment. Again, I, I can't believe this is all happening on the same day that the Inspiration launched. Four yeah. <laughs> launched three years ago. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, so we can we can start to see the recovery team getting closer to the Dragon capsule, one of the fast boats there in the background, um, as well as the capsule itself coming into view. Um, this arm, or excuse me, this arch, rather, that you see in a perfectly vertical position, that will actually extend out to about 45 degrees or so. Uh, and it will happen quite quickly. Basically, once all of the straps are in place and secure and tight, the, uh, that arm will extend. You can see uh, a protective buoy there at the end of the vessel to help make sure that nothing comes into contact with the Dragon capsule. But once those straps are attached and that arm, uh, that, those, that hydraulic arch is extended out, um, it, the Dragon capsule will actually be lifted up and out of the water pretty efficiently and uh, placed into that circular basket looking thing or what we, we call it a nest. Uh, and that is basically the, the landing point for the Dragon capsule. You can see it has a a bit of a concave shape to help support the similarly concave shaped uh, uh, heat shield at the bottom of the Dragon capsule. 
And once the dragon capsule is in the dragon nest, it will translate um, and move forward towards the um, front of the boat, actually more towards the middle of the boat, to a platform. Um, as you probably can see on the dragon capsule, the hatch is about in the middle of the dragon capsule. Um, so there is a platform for when they open up that hatch that it is very easy to exit the capsule um, to the platform. Now, while we can't see the crew themselves, they are remaining in their seats and strapped in with their safety harnesses. But at this point in time, they are, they have opened up their visor, <coughs> excuse me, as the dynamic portion of flight has concluded. We do continue to flow some cool nitrox or nitrogen oxygen air mixture in through their suits to help keep them uh, comfortable during this phase. But they are also at this point in time allowed to retrieve uh, their water bottles, which had previously been stored for re-entry. So uh, yeah, they're able to stay cool and hydrated and just hang out and, yeah. uh, and enjoy um, the, the last few minutes within their, their, their home for the last five days. They've done a lot of great work this week, so they get a little bit of time to relax and patiently wait as uh, they wait for that hatch to open and get that first fresh breath of air. Again, just some great views here. This is the recovery vessel with the helipad on top of it. Again, a helicopter is going to uh, land on that pad there, uh, board the crew and take them back to land very quickly, back to their families and friends that'll hopefully be there to, to <laughs> greet them back to Earth. <laughs> I love this drone shot that we have. Uh, first time we've had a view like this for our recovery operations. And it's Dragon SpaceX Com check. Dragon has you loud and clear, how many? Loud and clear, forward link transition complete. All right, we can see the recovery team continuing to pull the dragon capsule a little bit closer. There's still one individual there in the bucket where the main parachutes uh, are stored during flight. You can also see at the top of, uh, basically at the top of what is the side hatch, there's another bucket and that's where the drogue parachutes are located. Dragon SpaceX, rigging complete approximately five minutes until capsule lift. Copy that, five minutes till capsule lift. And again, the core communicating to the crew as they can't see outside of the capsule. So there's a lot of movements going on. There's a lot of sounds that they're going to be hearing. And there you can see the hydraulic lift mechanism lowering into position uh, in preparation for lifting the Dragon capsule out of the water. We'll see the recovery team individual who's there um, placing those attachment straps uh, onto the straps that he's already or, um, uh, uh, basically put around the circumference of the dragon capsule. <laughs> that individual will climb up a little bit higher on the capsule and then jump off <laughs> into the dark water. <laughs> and uh, oh, here's a cool view uh, from a, uh, above the, uh, the, that helicopter pad. Uh, that is where the helicopter will land and take the four crew members back to land. So about five minutes, well, at this point, four minutes until uh, the capsule is lifted out of the water. Dragon SpaceX, brace for capsule lift. <laughs> there they go. <laughs> it's probably warm water, Kate. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> sea creatures love warm water too, in my head. <laughs> They're not going to hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> we can see the Dragon capsule now coming out of the water. Our first view of that well-loved heat shield at the bottom of the 
dragon resilience vehicle. Dragon now completely out of the water and will be lowered onto that cradle there. Once the Dragon capsule is lowered, we will see the recovery team who are obviously out of the way for safety reasons at this point in time. But once the capsule is um, translated and secured, we'll see them begin to hose it down with fresh water. Uh, as we reuse these capsules, um, we want to try and minimize the effects of corrosion, which of course happen due to salt water. So we will actually begin to see not only that basin where the main parachutes were located, uh, that will get rinsed out as well as the, the overall capsule. And the crew is now on the recovery vessel, probably their first moment of a little bit more stability yeah. <laughs> being back on Earth. <laughs> Again, what will happen next is once the dragon capsule is fully seated in the nest uh, and we'll remove all the rigging from the capsule that will then translate that capsule and move it forward to a platform. Dragon SpaceX, welcome aboard the recovery vessel. Recovery personnel are completing final checks. Stand by for translation to the egress platform. Happy that SpaceX, anyway. All right, great news there. And uh, it looks like actually the estimation for lift was uh, uh, we, we completed it two minutes early. So like I said, it's a pretty efficient operation. The recovery team, not only have they performed this on numerous actual uh, human space, space flight missions, but also in, in rehearsals and, and training procedures of their own. So it looks like the crew members that you see there um, have donned some PPE once again. Um, these are respirators that help to ensure that if there are any lingering hypergolic uh, fumes that they will not be exposed to it. So they are actually installing plugs into uh, the uh, the, basically the, the, the outlet of those Draco thrusters and performing additional uh, hypergolic sniffs to ensure that there are no residual fumes. Once they install all of the necessary Draco plugs, they will continue uh, with a final round of um, detection checks and... Dragon SpaceX, looking for your okay to come on board with cameras. SpaceX Dragon, you're welcome aboard with the cams. Copies. Recovery team continuing with the installation of those safety plugs to help prevent any uh, um, fumes from the Draco thrusters. <coughs> Our Draco engines utilize hypergolic propellants and those are toxic to humans, of course. And so we want to ensure the safety of our recovery team as well as the Polaris Dawn crew. So we're going to close up those thrusters and perform some additional uh, fume checks before allowing anyone to approach Oh, our first view inside the capsule <laughs> post splashdown. We've got some happy faces, visors up, and then seatbelts on. Uh, yeah. Uh, the classic kid thumbs up. Yes, I love it. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I've actually been following along with 
I've <laughs> I've been following along with uh, the procedures that they have on their tablets. They are located on their legs, and it's actually written into <laughs> their procedure to remain seated and restrained, <laughs> just in case if uh, anybody inside was feeling daring. They are they are still required to uh, keep all hands inside uh, the ride at all times. <laughs> Yeah, that, that is actually very important. They have been out in space for five days. Uh, they don't have gravity, you know, forcing their muscles um, to be working the way that we utilize them here on Earth. So it is important that when they do take their first steps that we have uh, some of the crew and the medical team there to support them in case they need any help. Absolutely. Um, Again, it's only been five days. Uh, the Inspiration4 crew did three days and uh, they were able to pretty easily walk out uh, of the capsule, but we'll see how uh, this crew does back on gravity. Yeah. Everyone uh, seems to be pretty calm and collected and just chilling out uh, as they await for the Dragon capsule to be translated. Looks like that should be happening just in, a ne in the next couple, <laughs> excuse me, the next couple of minutes um, as the recovery team completes their uh, safety installations and removing some uh, harnessing connections. Uh, that nest that the Dragon capsule is in will move toward the forward end of the vessel where there is basically in, in the, the central part of the, of the vessel, there is a, a deck where SpaceX uh, crew members are standing by. And as Jesse said, will be able to assist the astronauts if necessary, to get out of um, uh, out of the capsule or or egress, as we say. And a cool view here, just looking from behind the seats. On your left hand side is Commander Jared Isaacman, and your right hand side is our pilot Kid Poteet. You can kind of get a feel for the difference in seat position. Uh, in terms of the position that it's in now and the position that it, the seats were in while the crew was still in space. The warning and the 1.21 gigawatts uh, <laughs> uh, stickers were a little bit closer to us, I, I, I feel like. So it kind of gives you a feel for the amount of rotation in those seats. Pretty cool to be able to see the same displays that the crew um, utilizes while they were in flight. Once again, uh, Dragon Resilience has been successful. Well, first of all, made a it made an on-time splashdown uh, in the. I guess this would be you know in considered in the Florida Keys down near uh, at Dry Tortugas and they had a pretty quick recovery out of the water. Um, they are now on the recovery vessel and standing by for the final preparations uh, performed by the recovery team prior to uh, basically opening that side hatch. Once again, this will be the first time that the Polaris Dawn crew will have fresh air. It'll be fresh, salty, fishy <laughs> air, <laughs> but fresh air nonetheless. <laughs> and there we can see the Dragon capsule now being moved toward the central part of the ship. You can see there, uh, there are some SpaceX crew members also wearing respirators. Once again, as we will perform the final hypergolic um, safety uh, sniffing te tests. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, beginning to spray the Dragon capsule down with fresh water to try and rinse that salt water off of the metallic components. This is very exciting. We're just a few minutes away. There's still some more procedures that they have to go through in order to open that hatch, but just a few minutes away from hatch opening. And again, the first person that will meet them will be the flight surgeon who will enter the capsule uh, and make sure that the crew is feeling good and ready to exit their seats.
For those of you that just ha that have joined just recently, uh, the Dragon capsule carrying the Polaris Dawn crew splashed down just 41 minutes ago at 12.36 a.m. Pacific time, 3.36 a.m. Uh, East Coast time. And here we are uh, 40 minutes later, pretty quick operations by the recovery teams in terms of getting over to where the capsule landed, getting uh, the parachutes out of the water and uh, adhering the required straps and ultimately lifting the Dragon capsule up onto the recovery vessel as we just saw a few minutes ago. Right now the recovery team outside of the Dragon capsule, like I said before, spraying down the capsule with some fresh water. Dragon SpaceX, stand by for side hatch opening and egress. All right, good news there. Copy that, SpaceX, we're standing by. Looks like those safety checks were quick and successful as everyone has doffed their respirators. And there you can see officially the hatch is open. I just heard cheering from a distant part of the building. <laughs> I have a feeling that came from the Dragon teams at their computers. That's, that was pretty cool. <laughs> That is the, uh, the flight surgeon doing initial uh, medical checks, making sure that everybody is feeling good. I have a feeling by his smiling face, he's getting four smiling faces in return. Polariston crew has now officially taken their first breath of Earth air <laughs> in the last five days. <laughs> we can see the recovery team in the background um, basically putting up some protective uh, fixtures around the, the side hatch in order to ensure that as the crew egresses and, uh, and, and, and gets assisted as they come out of the capsule that they uh, don't hurt the, the, the side hatch seals uh, or themselves. Uh, obviously want to protect the, the individuals as well. And super exciting, we can see that the crew is now prepping the Dragon capsule for the crew egress. And there is, you know, they're gonna be removing their harnesses, um, removing any equipment out of the way to ensure that they are safe to step out of their seats and egress the Dragon capsule. Even the flight surgeon has to be assisted. <laughs> it's some tough maneuvering. So we'll start to see the footrests. Um, the recovery team will come in and there <laughs> is our Polaris Dawn crew. Our first live view with the side hatch open, <laughs> fist pumps, thumbs up. I'm sure if we had audio, there would be some cheers as well. <laughs> I'm sure the crew is so excited to be home. Mission complete, like they said, after five days yep. of some historic milestones. That smiling face there in the side hatch taking pictures, I'm sure that is John Krause, also known as Snap. Uh, he is the, I believe, the content director for the Polaris Dawn program. I'm sure uh, it's an exciting moment to be able to capture both with video and photo 
the smiling faces of the crew members. Now we can see some SpaceX crew members, uh, re recovery team, uh, they'll come in, they will start to remove the footrests at the bottoms of each seat. That will help give a little bit more moving room, uh, or I should say area to, uh, for folks to get in and help the, the, our four Polaris on astronauts get out a little bit easier. And there's a foot rest being removed there, as Kate mentioned. Fun fact about those foot rests, they are uh, custom sized for each astronaut, uh, as well as the armrests. So each armrest and footrest basically comes in like a small, medium, or large option. And depending on, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, the foot length and the arm length of each individual, they get the appropriate size for their body measurements. Yeah, I mean, that goes with the seats themselves, the suits themselves are all customized to each individual astronaut and crew member. Um, basically, they get a customized version just for themselves yeah. for these <laughs> missions. <laughs> now we can see that... Um, Pardon me, the crew members are now able to undo their safety harnesses, their, their five-point safety straps, and uh, I guess that would be the last step before, <laughs> before uh, being able to get out. Now, it seems as though the first person to come out will be Anna Menon, who is on the far right side as we are looking at it. She is in seat four, yeah. So Anna <laughs> is now making her way with this assisted egress. Mission specialist Anna Menon. <laughs> There she is. Fellow SpaceXer. Yes. <laughs> so happy. <laughs> I love this. So excited. <laughs> Welcome back to Earth, Anna. We heard um, Haley Arsenault, who was one of the mission specialists and, uh, and she, for the Inspiration4 mission, uh, we heard her say that Jared um, always let the ladies go first. And so I have a feeling that Sarah might be the next one to egress here. Yep, we can see her uh, now getting out of her seat. <laughs> she and Anna had the two window seats. SpaceX team assisting her to make sure that she doesn't hit the side hatch in any way. <laughs> <laughs> so much excitement. Our second SpaceXer to fly in space, mission specialist Sarah Gillis back on Earth. <laughs> it's so cool to see her. Now egressing is our pilot. Kid Poteet. I would bet good money that we're going to see some thumbs up <laughs> <laughs> once Kid exits. It's pretty cool to see that uh, they are coming out, standing up on their own two feet and walking off. SpaceX, Dragon, this is the final call. Sign up. <laughs> <laughs> Some dance moves. <laughs> That's pretty great. I think that move should be added to 
the required choreography for <laughs> human spaceflight missions. You know, we have the astronaut lean back when they approach <laughs> their rocket on launch day. The uh, kid shuffle, I think, should be the the, the next one for, for post-egress. <laughs> We heard Jared get one last call out on <laughs> the loops before egressing himself. And the final Polaris Dawn crew member egressing Dragon Resilience, Commander Jared Isaacman. <laughs> Our second frequent flyer in Dragon, completing his second mission in space. <laughs> for a second, I thought. <laughs> for, a, for a second, I thought he was saying goodbye to his spacecraft, uh, <laughs> but it turns out he was saying goodbye to the people still in there, <laughs> assisting him with his egress. So uh, incredible to see um, what what a day, what a week, <laughs> what a week. <laughs> And now with our Polaris Dawn crew safely back home on Earth and getting checked out by our medical team, what an incredible and exciting mission this has been. Next up, the crew will actually catch a helicopter flight back to shore where they will rejoin their families. Over the five-day mission, Polaris Dawn set records and marked a few firsts that are critical to SpaceX's long-term plans for making humanity a multi-planetary species. After lifting off on Tuesday, September 10th at 5.23 a.m. Eastern Time from Launch Complex 39A at the Kennedy Space Center, Dragon climbed to an apogee of just over 1,408 kilometers, flying further than any Dragon to date and traveling further from Earth than any humans since the end of the Apollo program. Then on September 12th, SpaceX teams and the Polaris Dawn crew successfully conducted the first spacewalk from Dragon, testing our new in-house developed EVA suits and procedures that will be critical for building bases and cities on the moon and Mars. Yeah, and it was so cool to watch that. The crew also performed a number of science and research experiments while in orbit, including 36 research studies and experiments designed to advance both human health on Earth and during long duration, long duration spaceflight. And over the course of the mission, the crew demonstrated Starlink's power to transform the way we communicate with spacecraft and people in low Earth orbit, including that incredible music moment, which uh, I've watched many times and will continue to watch even more. <laughs> Now, our future in space is definitely bright, and it's really exciting to think about where we will be in the not-too-distant future. With all of that, thank you so much for joining us tonight and all week. As always, be sure to check x.com slash SpaceX for updates. I'm Kate Tice. And I'm Jesse Anderson. Thank you to everyone for being with us this week for the Polaris Dawn mission, and have an incredible night. <laughs>